Had her. <laughs> barely home from the hospital. CARS has always played a major part in my life. Well, that's how my parents always begin the story. How many in here can remember your very first car? The year 1975. Mine was a 1965 Pontiac GTO. Four speed, curve shift, convertible, rag top, white. The interior, white leather bucket seats that helped you so tight. Oh, let's get ready to rumble. It has a whole new meaning. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I switched on that engine, 300. 89 cubic feet, 335 horsepower. Oh, can you feel the need for speed? <laughs> Since then, I've owned a plethora of cars. Everything from a Datsun B210 to, for five luxurious, oddly weird days, a 1975 Silver Shadow Rolls Royce. That yeah, not today. <laughs> it's a story for another day. But I want to tell you a little bit more about my GTO. It was a custom paint job. Black, midnight black on the outside. Flecked with gold metallic. Zero to 60, it winked at you, ka -chow. So obviously, I have a need for speed in all of my cars. <coughs> In 2005, I ended up and bought a new Beetle, because I missed the old Beetle. Five speed, spoiler on the back, turbo charge. And yeah, zero to 60, ka-chow, baby. You wouldn't see me coming or going. I don't know if you've noticed it out there, but I have another little sporty model out there. Spoiler, midnight black and enough of a red racing stripe down the side to say, I have added to you, yeah. Zero to 60, how about ka-chunk? <laughs> my five-speed blender can go faster <laughs> than my Kia Ria. <laughs> Which, a couple weeks ago, I got this phone call. Somebody said, hey, Brie. Got a proposition for you. And I said, okay. What's the deal? How would you like to come on over to Orlando and ride shotgun to a Lamborghini? Yeah, no. Too low to the ground. The most exciting thing about a Lamborghini is the windows or the doors go up. No. Been there, done that. Don't really care. All right. Well, how about the Porsche? You know, I've been in a Porsche 911, and it's a glorified Volkswagen engine with a couple extra zeros next to the price tag. <laughs> nah, appreciate it, but nah. All right, I got one for you. Why don't you ride shotgun in the NASCAR? Is that the one that goes 200 miles an hour? Banking just so? And they went, yeah, I said, oh boy, I feel the need for speed. <laughs> Sign me up. I got there. They don't let you just get in with your street codes, just in case you, they want to make sure that the atmosphere is true NASCAR. They pointed over there after I signed all this paperwork and said I wouldn't sue in case, and <laughs> they won't sue just in case. So I looked over there at the jumpsuits. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you've noticed this or not. In addition to being height challenged, there is a girth to me. I have curves. Right? The jumpsuits do not have curves. Right, so it's like putting a round hole in a square peg, or a square peg in a round hole. Figure it out. It took me 20 minutes to find something that would fit. 10 more minutes rolling up the sleeves and the pant legs. I looked like a kid in my daddy's jumpsuit. 
we're doing role play. So I'm sashaying up there and going, this is going to be good. I can smell the gasoline. I hear the roar of the car. <clears throat> and I can smell the rubber meeting the road. Oh, my heart was going, oh, baby, <laughs> calm me down. Get up there, sign more paperwork. Put this little stocking cap on me. I'm only to assume that that meant it was more for a hygiene purpose than anything else. And when I turned around, my husband said, you look just like Spanky from our gang. <laughs> well, that's exciting, honey. <laughs> we put on the one size does not fit all helmet. Thankfully, I had sunglasses on because otherwise the helmet would be down to here. So I get out to the car. Now I realize that they really want this experience to be true to life, which is probably why I couldn't open the car door. I don't understand how much more aerodynamic a car is when it doesn't have the handle to open the door. Again, height challenged. The window starts about here. So I said, how do I get into the window? Climb. Climb. All right, how do I climb in? Well, you put your leg up and scooch in. I said, I scooch in? All right. So, honestly, it looks more like me trying to do judo with a high jump. Didn't work. I've never had to get a booster to get into a car before, but they brought out <laughs> steps and boosted me in. Finally, neck belt, check. Seat belt, check. The engines are <laughs> And my heart's going, oh, 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 this is going good. Look at the driver, and I go, I feel the need for speed. <laughs> He's like, okay, Chucky. <laughs> Burns rubber out. Next thing I know, I'm up, and I look, and I'm that close to the wall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last thing I remember. <laughs> Until someone came up and said, ma'am, ma'am, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm going, oh, drool. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm just fine. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what the other two laps were like because I fell asleep. And you may say, how can you fall asleep going 200 miles an hour? When I was an infant and I couldn't sleep, my parents did not rock me in the rocking chairs. No, they did not sing me lullabies. They strapped me into the back of their 1955 Chevy. <laughs> And it took as long as my dad could drive around the block before the hum of that engine put me to sleep. It was the best power nap I've ever had. Mr. Chestnut.